Welcome back. This is Weekend Express. We are discussing sex for sanitary pads in studio this morning with reports indicating 65% of Kenyan women and girls are unable to afford sanitary pads. This is a conversation that impacts society on a larger scale. But before we continue, let's take a few calls this morning. We have Imani Mwita who is calling in from Busia. Imani, many thanks for calling to your question or comment, please. Sasa <laughs> kuitisha pesa ya pad kwanza kabla pesa ya basi kwa sababu hii basi tunalua kila mwaka ambapo watoto wetu wasichana wanaenda kwa njia njia ya ushiriki na mwanae kwa sababu ya kukosa pesa kwa sababu wazazi ni wengine ni maskini kama kaangalia kusia kuna maskini wa kadri ambapo itadaumu ndani tadaumu bodi ya shule tafadhali bodi ya shule iweke maana ni kwamba pad si lazima mzazi alipe kabla ya kulipa karo ya shule ambapo mtoto atasoma bila wasiwasi wote bila kufukuzwa kwenda nyumbani kwa hivyo mimi nadaumu sana board tafadhali ile mmanataa hapo mjaribu sana board ya shule iwe inatoza pad kwanza kabla ya pesa ya basi kwa sababu hii basi si watoto wote wanaenda kwa kwa hiyo basi na hii ni shule ya wasichana Asante sana. That is uh, Imani Mwita calling in from Busia. We also have a Steve also calling in from Busia. Steve, good morning. Your question or comment, please. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Go ahead. Uh, Mi naitwa Steve unapiga kutoka Busia. Naam. Asua mnapo Busia hao watoto Busia hii yetu hata mnapoangalia hapo mna inaonekana Busia is the worst. Mhm. Uh -huh. And the reason why kitu cha kwanza tumesema ni poverty umesikia vile huyo mtoto amesema wakati anaenda kwa mzazi mzazi anamwambia nitakununulia hizo vitu ama nitakununulia nini mtoto kuangalia kutumia plangeti ama kutumia kitu kingine inabidi uh -huh. afanye sex ndio apate nini mzazi pia hapa busi anakuambia vile tunaongea na mnai watoto wasichana ukienda kwa soko ndio wamepewa mandizi ndio wamepewa nini na amestukiwa na hiyo nini unajua inakuwa aibu kwa huyu mtoto uh -huh. sasa inakuwa rais kuiengeji tu nikienda shule unaona wazazi wanatuma watoto shule alafu mtoto akifika shule na ako kwa hiyo period hizo vitu zinatumwa shule waja ni kuambie ziko but yule mtu wa kukonsoli hao watoto wakati wamefika hiyo wakati awapatie ndiye hatuna kama sasa mtoto anaenda staff ngo anataka hizo vitu unasikia mwalimu kutoka kwa bilisa na mtoto mnataka nini Tell me, au yule mtoto alikuwa anaenda kuchukua hiyo kitu anaenda kweli huko wanarudi wanatoroka wanakaa nyumbani uh -huh. nikimalizia si mama na dada tafadhali nilikuwa na waomba muongee na serikali tutafute mtu kama matron wa kukaa shule kwa sababu walimu wa, 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 hawawezi watoto ni wengi wa wa consult alafu nataka mkuje masinani hapa kusia tuko na kitu moja inaitwa disco matanga niwaambia mjawai jua si mama na dada nataka mtume watu wenye kwa ground hapa uh -huh. unapata sisi wazazi Atuko responsible tumelala kwa nyumba na watoto walitoka mtoto asiyani as nine years aka anacheza disco watu wanaume wakiuza miwa hapa wanabeba hao watoto na kuambia wasichana wetu hapa at, yani tunasema kuzaa mtoto msichana ni bahati mbaya tafadhali mama na dada popote mlipo tunawaunga mkono kuja masinani wacha wewe we, kuangalia party peke yake kuja masinani hata usiku tembea disco hapa mtu akikufa pusia hapa sisi tunafikiria ni usuni jana mali pengine hapa ni furaha watu wanacheza huko na wengi unaweza sema ni sherehe gani lakini mtu amekufa watoto wetu wasichana wamepotelea utafadhali sasa sana sana KTN thank you very much asante sana Steve calling in from Busia and finally we also have a Alice Siko calling in from Kasarani Alice good morning your question or comment please eh habari asubuhi nzuri sana endelea tafadhali okay nilikuwa na naendelea hivi kwa vile kuna sisi wa mama kuna wengine wanafanya tu kazi ya kufulia watu kuna wale wanaanaika wanaangaika ukweli kwa upande wa kununulia watoto hizo pale inafika wakati mama ameenda kibarua ya kufua amepata labda shilingi 300 na hii 300 ndio anataka kununulia chakula kila kitu kwa hiyo kwa hivyo 
inabati inafika wakati mtu amefika wakati anataka kuwa na hizo nini zimeanza kutoka mm-hmm. mtu unashindwa uta, utaanzia wapi sasa nilikuwa na, naonelea kwamba kama wanaweza pati yao watoto hao wakati wamefunga shule wanapewa za kutosha kama vile watafunga hii ni wanafunga karibu wiki yeah. sita waweze kupewa ya kukata kwa this two months zenye watakaa nyumbani uh-huh. ama kama inawezekana kama inaweza kuwa inapelekwa kwa makanisa ili watu wafanye nini waweze kuwasiana wao wakipewa huko kwa makanisa juu unapata mtu akona na watoto kama wasiana watatu kama mimi niko na wasiana watatu uh-huh. kuna sisi utatoa wapi hiyo pesa ya kununua hizo vitu unaona uh-huh. sasa nilikuwa naomba kama wanaweza pewa huko kwa shule zenye wanaweza kuja nazo nyumbani za kutoshea huo muda wote alafu kila mwezi kiwezekana wapo kipewa tu wengine wanaogopa kwenda shule yenyewe kwenda kuaibikia huko Sawa so, sawa so, asante sana Ali Sasiko uh, tupigia kutoka Kasarani we also have uh, Moses Ombuse calling in from Malava Moses habari asubuhi to your question or comment please Yeah I want to give a comment eh? Go ahead please Um I don't in our country you go to most of these public places like bars and lodgings you will find that there is hello 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 go ahead uh, moses we can hear you yeah i was saying in our, in our country when you go to public places like hotels and lodges you will find that there are dispensers for condoms placed all over Why are we not thinking about the guaranteed by also doing the same in school, public schools so that it is easy for the children to access this this uh, sanitary pads. Uh-huh. And then number two, uh-huh. why don't uh, we come up with a policy like when we were growing up when you go to school you will be provided with a, an exercise book you will be provided with a, a slate to write on just in a similar manner we can also have these things as part of the school equipment so that uh, when a girl child goes to school one of the things she supplied with is a sanitary pad i know we'll talk of uh, where the resources will come from but really if we chose that that is the direction we should take the government should come up with a, a policy or a budget that will cater for such all right Thank, Thank you. you. Thank much. you very much. That is uh, Moses Mbuse calling in from Malava. Uh, many thanks for your feedback this morning. So let's discuss some of what uh, has been coming in. Let's begin with Moses uh, since he was the most recent caller. And uh, you know, he, 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 he seems to have noticed what I've noticed. Uh, we have a lot of condoms, you know, everywhere in public institutions, <coughs> in bars, in schools, in hotels. Why can we not have the same for the girl child? And he also um brings in the when, when we went to school we had a book given to you an exercise book a pen why cannot can we not have um sanitary pads as part of school equipment as well um, it, is, it is a good um a uh, suggestion but he also already mentions the downfall the question will be where will the resources come from so maybe um to hear from you Maureen um resources are a big deal i mean how much could it possibly cost to finance one girl for the whole year in terms of sanitary towels Okay so what happens is for us as mama and dada uh-huh. as much as we're doing the mentorship we also put in the aspect of the sanitary towels and so for an year we say for you to support a girl for an year it just cost you 1200 shillings 1200 shillings only to support one girl uh-huh. and this is calculated in the sense that the cheapest sanitary towel costs 50 shillings uh-huh. which is a nigga right so if you are to buy two for the girl that means she's catered for for the month and that costs only 100 shillings so uh-huh. at the end of the year Uh, the girl will only have cost uh, will only have consumed 1200 shillings mm-hmm. so if you want to support less resources not be an issue that it's too much it's not too much mm-hmm. it's just 1200 to support a girl mm-hmm. and just like our caller has said there is a lot that needs to be done in yes but the government cannot work alone because again we have other organizations and other institutions that also would come in and support because again we, we keep saying like the government assists they will tell you you know what we've given you free sanitary towels mm-hmm. but then again who is following up on the same right. so i think institutions also need to come on board uh, different organizations different women organizations even the men 
need to come and support us mm -hmm. because at the end of the day they have daughters right. they have wives right they're um, part of the society mm -hmm. i'll come to you sylvia in just yeah. a moment but uh, uh beatrice uh early on alisa siko called in from kasarani she says she's a mother of three girls uh she washes clothes with barua uh, for a living and many times she cannot afford uh to cater for all the three girls in a month and she, she's uh, she has a simple request um even when they get these sanitary pads in schools can can, can they be given um two or three <coughs> more packets to use when they go home for the holidays because they still uh you know have meant a, a menstrual cycle in that period um but for a mother like alice who is very aware that these things are needed but cannot afford them i mean how do we um begin to spread the awareness even for parents like this you do not have to send your child out uh, to get them in different means first uh, let me appreciate uh, the the ladies uh -huh. because of the mentorship they are doing I would say if uh, the, when the girls have come home, if we can have more mentorship programs in different parts of the country, I'm very sure we will be able to get these sanitary beds. When the schools are closing, definitely you cannot tell the teachers to, to give the girls to the sanitary beds to come with them home. So, but if we have, if we have some places whereby these girls will come and get some more education, it's really possible that mm -hmm. we, can, we can we can be able they can be able to be supplied with right. the sanitary but right. and uh, I understand there is one who said I think one of the ladies said that mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. even the churches can be able to provide mm -hmm. if the schools cannot be able even the churches can take the responsibility right. because we have girls in our churches mm -hmm. yeah all right um, and uh, you know Sylvia we also had Steve calling in from Busia and of course Busia has been one of the hardest hit areas uh, when it comes to issues of teenage pregnancy and uh, transactional sex and he, he he rightfully mentions when you go to the schools you will find these pads there uh, but the girls still cannot access them because <coughs> the person who is in charge of these pads it is you know like you're mentioning is not friendly um does not have the discreetness that the girls uh, really would want to have is it then time to have um somebody really in charge of these sanitary towels in school, somebody uh, who is conversant with matters menstrual health, somebody who can offer uh, this kind of advice and mentorship then to the students? Um, yeah, I totally agree with um, Steve. Uh -huh. um, and uh, personally, I've been in those schools. And the reality of things, um, the relationships uh, between the girls and the teachers are not that friendly. And um, there are time um, we went to a school, and the girls, in fact, it was in a primary school, mm -hmm. and this girl said, Sylvia, musipatie walimu pads, mtupatie sisi. Right. And you see, that tells a lot. That speaks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there is no honesty um, in our schools. Mm -hmm. People don't want to be accountable. People want, don't want to be responsible. And you know, uh, when we are talking about the community, it is about love. Mm -hmm. If you don't love these girls, you will not do anything good for them. Mm -hmm. You will not stand for them. The first thing is love. You right. need to love them. You need to, to, to love them, concentrate on their issues, mm -hmm. take that responsibility, take that gap, have that gap as a parent. Because when you have a child at that time, you are the parent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where this child is coming from mm -hmm. yeah all right but uh, sometimes it matters when where your child is going especially when they're female and at a certain age and Steve also mentioned um, disco matanga yeah. something that's uh, actually very popular in uh, areas of Kisi and really other parts of the country um, you with the Simama Idnadada initiative have gone around the country a lot it's something you have experienced Maureen talk to us about this um, he mentions girls as young as nine years old uh, going to these disco matangas being picked up by older men they're parents not really asking where they are. Talk to us about your experience with this. Um, I've been lucky enough to um, work with girls. I work with girls mm -hmm. and I love working with girls. And uh, in one way or another, they've been able to speak up. And it is true that this is happening. A girl as young as nine years mm -hmm. is not only just, is, she's not being forced to have sex. She's actually being a willing seller, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is because, again, we go back to the, our parents. How are our parents bringing us up? How is the society? taking up, because um, I remember when I was growing up, I, I was a child of the community. Mm -hmm. So any wrong I did, any woman or any man on the streets would punish me. Right. They don't even know I'm from where, good but old I'll days. be punished. You know, the good <laughs> old days, I wish they would go back to that. So yeah, these things are happening, and uh, it's high time we wake up 
and don't be, don't be blind to it. Uh -huh. Do not deny that a girl as young as nine can indulge in sex. Do not deny that a man as old as 50 will go out with a girl as young as nine. Uh -huh. It is happening. Uh -huh. And it's sad that uh, it's happened to our country, Kenya, where we, we, we boast and brag that we have morals that are guiding us and moving with us. Uh -huh. And I think it's also high time that the church also stops being blind to it. Because we may not be there as mama and dada in all the disco matangas, but what is the society doing? What is the church doing? Uh -huh. What is the school institution doing about it? Right. What is the family that even has that disco matanga doing about it? Uh -huh. So I think it's a call to everyone. It's not just us as mama and dada. Yes, we will support where we are able to. But then again, uh, we need to stop being blind about it. It is happening. Uh -huh. I've experienced and I've worked with girls who are telling you, yes, I have had sex and I have had it in these several types of styles, you know. And I've not just had sex for, for money, but also sex for pleasure. Uh -huh. You know, at, right. at 13, I wouldn't even talk about sex, right. you know. Right. It, was, it, was not, it was not called for at all. But right now, if you do not address the issue that a 13-year-old about sex, then you're going wrong. Don't right. go tell her about you uh, advancing in your career, and you, then you forget how, where she comes from and what she's going through. Uh -huh. So I think it is there, and we need to open up our eyes uh, into something. So it's clear then that, you know, <clears throat> there is no lack of, sex information out there even for our young children and our young girls it's just is it being given by the right person mm -hmm. at the right time mm -hmm. and in the right manner because many of them get to learn about it on the internet mm -hmm. uh, from their mm -hmm. friends from school and that's what you were saying Beatrice um, the clergy really the church um, the mosques you know the clergy really coming into not just read the Bible verse that fornication is a sin mm -hmm. but uh, come out and interpret this in you know in the context of uh, today's life um, but uh, finally we had um Imani Mwita, who was a first scholar, also calling in from Busia, and he puts all the blame on uh, the school boards because he says the school boards are out and about uh, really just asking for, for school fees, uh, championing for money for this, money for infrastructure, money to buy school buses most of the time, and uh, there's more pressing issues like sanitary towels, uh, which account for high rates of absenteeism in most of these schools. Is this something then, Beatrice, you would agree that, you know, we're blaming the school board uh, and it, it isn't that shifting blame from the parent and the original family set up at home? As I said earlier, that what we are lacking is collective responsibility, uh -huh. meaning even uh, the parent, it has to start from the parent right. to the neighbors. I mean, they have a say in the school board yeah. as well. To the yeah. neighbors, uh -huh. then to the school board. We cannot blame entirely the school board because uh, you understand your child better than a teacher can understand a child. Uh -huh. So a child starts from home before the child goes to school. It has to start from the parent. Me, if you ask me, I will blame entirely the parent. Uh -huh. Yeah, All I right. won't blame the school board. All right. So yeah. clearly a lot more information needed. Um, yeah. Before we wind up, ladies, um, even as we speak solutions, of course, we need to begin with whether society is willing uh, to speak about these solutions, make this a national debate. Um, Sylvia, earlier on, we were talking about your experience in Kajiado County. Yeah. What is the overall reception? It's 2017. You'd expect a lot of things are publicly talked about. But what is the reception to mat um, menstrual health education generally across the country, not just in rural areas? Um, through the experience, um, we are still lacking the information the society is still lacking the information because um, um especially in kajiado people are still holding the culture um talking about menstruation in front of uh, teachers parents and kids um it is it is a no discussion there they don't talk about it when you talk about it they are looking at you as if you are coming from a different country, you are not living in Kenya, and these things, they are not happening. But the reality of things, these things are happening. And girls still in Kajiado, believe it or not, um, they are using the um, halls mm. during their periods. Right. They don't go to school, and they stay away from home. They go to Kichaka, stay there, for some times, then they come back home. Because according to them, that is um, dirty. It is something that you're not supposed to speak about it, including your own mother uh -huh. cannot speak about it. Uh -huh. And um, for us, we spoke it, and we are still speaking. We are still talking about menstruation, and we want to create that awareness until um, 
for the notice. Right. Yes. Right. And of course, it's important to get the meals um, in this conversation. In rural setups, uh, many times, even in you know a full family setup, many times it's the father uh, who provides for the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, even if you go to your mother, she'll still ask you to go to your father uh, to ask for. Uh, you know, to ask for pads. So many times the mother herself is not comfortable speaking to her husband uh, yeah. about mm. these very things. So how then, Maureen, would you say we can better incorporate the men in this conversation, especially in rural Kenya? Um, I look forward to the day where every man will walk into a supermarket and pick a sanitary towel. Without hiding. Without hiding <laughs> and as many as possible. And call even back home and ask, how many did you want me mm -hmm. to buy, you know? I look forward to that. But then we can only get there if one, men accept that the issue concerning the girl child and access to sanitary towels, not just the mother's, but also his own responsibility. But I like how we do it as mama and the dada. When we're doing our mentorship, mm -hmm. we also talk to the boys. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not an issue of just boys, uh, of just girls yes. and accessing sanitary towels, but also the boys. What role are you playing? Yeah. We talk about the boy child being able to support the sister and the classmate in class. When I'm experiencing my menstrual periods, I do not want you to bully me. I do not want you to jeer at me and enjoy me. Uh -huh. I want you to support me. Support me by just being silent, you know? Right. Support right. me by just don't looking at me funny. But also the men need to come on board and support us. We, we, we move around the country as mama and dada, uh -huh. and we also have some men who've decided, uh -huh. you know what, I need to support the That's girl child. Mm -hmm. So you find a man with us and he's ready with the sanitary towels, like 50 of them. Let's yeah. go, let's move, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. I need to support girls. We have people who call in and want to support girls. They want to support three girls, four girls. So I think men out there, I think I need to speak to them, are they? Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> men that's out your there. camera right there. <laughs> men out there, it's, you need to take charge. The issue concerning the girl child is real. Sanitary towels is not only the mother's responsibility, but also your responsibility. All right. Yeah. Let's, right. Let's, okay. let's, let's get out of our comfort zones and let's, let's work together. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, Sylvia, future. please, even as you come in, let us know how, um, because uh, Maureen <coughs> mentioned only 1,200 shillings to support one girl for a whole year. So how then uh, can the country collect Collectively, also come in to support the girl with Mama Nadada initiative. Um, it's Mama Nadada. Um, we have our um, telephone numbers. You can reach us, uh, us through the email, mm -hmm. and uh, we have also a Mchanga number. Maybe we can leave with you. Yes, we'll be putting that on our social media websites shortly. Yes, um, and another thing that I, I'll, I'll say uh, when we talk of sanitary, you know, their girls only have one panty. They wear during the day, at night, they wash. Uh -huh. um, and through that kitty, we also cater for the panties right. of the girls. But I still want to say, um, when we are doing mentorship for the girls, um, boy, uh, we are looking for male figures. Mm -hmm. The boy child is looking for you. Uh -huh. The boy child is missing to see your, um, your mentors out there. Uh -huh. So please come, join us. Um, and mentor the boys. As much as we are mentoring the girls, the boy child is still our child. We can't avoid our, our boy child. Great. All right. Yeah. And let's have your final comments, Beatrice, especially being a mother and being somebody who's mentored, um, you know, girls who are not necessarily your biological children, but you consider yourself a mother of any girl that you see who needs this help. I would say that uh, our girls, our girls should stop from uh, being influenced by these big men uh -huh. outside there and seek help from either aunties, if their mothers are not able, if their parents are not able, they can seek help from their aunties, uh -huh. sisters, cousins, they can talk about it. They can even talk to the uh, teachers. We have female teachers who are very good. We cannot rule out the aspect that the teachers are not gi giving us uh, help, uh -huh. but they are really trying their best. Uh -huh. If they can talk to the teachers, when they have issues of such a kind, I'm very sure they will get great help. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, of course, talking many times is the beginning of finding solutions yeah. um, in problems, talking to people, going through the yeah. same issue. Mm -hmm. All right, so many uh, many thanks for joining us on this conversation. Beatrice Nyomenda, Sylvia Maina, and uh, Maureen Nderitu, both of whom are from the Simama Nadada Initiative. We'll be putting uh, their contacts on our social media pages for you to learn how you can uh, support a girl through a whole year um, in terms of sanitary towels, something that only costs 12 100 Kenyan shillings. But that's why we wind up our conversation.
Commission on Weekend Express this morning. Many thanks for watching. My name is Michelle Ngele. I also have uh, Ashley Missouri here at the studio. Many thanks for watching. Do join us again next week, same time, same place for this and so much more. Good morning. Zuri, as 